Opese o buwa nyamisem kaa enye uyeye. Opese u sika e kenya misem ese sa amamfu o jidiye ni amamfu o kra. Ana ase opese u duye jye bebi e be buwa wa sa si iso ha ene dam kwa ma temwada. Sene debiye e bom paye se. Rabbana atina fi dunia hasana wa fil akhiratil hasana wa kine adhaba na. Enye uha o nyina tuwa cha. Mam online media network. Odawa fi ke siyem. Aya di nyanko pa wasem brem wa santichi. Hau sa ene brofo kase emu ewo uyase afa nanyi nano hiyan o mwa se ye ibe tuya studio bells esi esi e studio mfidiye ato to mfidi fofro ede abwa bwante nsu nyame semka nyame sumu mpense mpense emu eni jumediye fofro akika owa gana ibi buwa ya yin ewo universal merchant bank a yi kweni tia fenu umb account name mam online media network account number 0221395 6 0 2 0 1 9 and now your mobile money number is so 0 2 4 6 7 5 1 1 7 5 a dinner that's on your mom online oh i'm on a nice one but me you be a boy you made a our swift code m b g h g h a c 0 2 2 1 3 9 5 6 0 2 0 1 9 why in the bible to for now go pound boss here now i'm born in my home or home at the amano isha Allah. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Aladi inyankan tadi shem wana didi. Eni wang hao ni na atu a jidiye fwoso. Nese enti ose. Mayen sisi wang. Mayen sha wane nye ya. Empo kura sa wame japadia. Wana ufu e jawe e chirino. Mayen fa. Se wini me jankebi. Na o chene ben kro kro no. Ede wun sa fe fani tiri huwa. Ala si. Enshira soronko ni wumu. Afia subye moun. Janin afashe idol ada. Edru ho. Diye wube di. Diye wube she. Eni bebi o dini tibeto. Mam online. E tiye fu. Ashe. Followers or more, we are see a fanny na any salamu muslimin foundation a kambum ye be chen tadi a kum gang anan den chi an wen yane di a jit nyanka any wana wini be any quans rum kokra swafi fre anan chat mam online a was zero two four six seven five one one seven five nedin chi mu bia u hia we ye de janna agenda fa papayo tau janna me janka bin srafi o sato ne nu fa ba nya ko pon cha dis bi te mam radio allahu akbar mam mam wallahi al janna tu fi dos is our limit insha allah amen na aha mam online radio and tv o pese o ti enka na o ti ya ko online radio box na search mam radio 1 o binya modern ghana mam radio 1 Tune in radio, Mam Radio One. Google Play Store, your application, your mobile app, Edaho. Mam Radio One, o se chia, o bit mea download ye app at your phone, so bibi on nbi a beti enka. Radio.net, o kwa, o se chie, Mam Radio One, o be nyayen, live. Na ye WhatsApp groups, a ho doa, o maji yen chie chie ye tu mwa, ye post ye videos, audios, ene ye post from our website, ede tutu tutu honu mwono. Ebini radio member GH Bayanul Din FM USA E Alim Counseling Center Salamu Muslimi Foundation Ideal Muslims of Mam Mam Dawa Kitiki Muslim Access Movement Page One to Three Mam Online Page One to Ten Mam Online Egypt Libya Ena Germany Islamic Gallery Ena Ideal Muslims of Tuase These are the platforms ah yade ye WhatsApp audios ni videos e Google Guso. Ema amount for any bit. So, all person will be can one. All you have to do is say, "Obe ade your studio lines and we'll group them." Zero two four six seven five one one seven five. And now zero two zero zero seven seven three three six seven. And now say, "Wow, in person, all person will join the mom online platform now." Chat or call zero two four six seven five one one seven five. And now zero two zero zero seven seven three three six seven. Program aye aye a life. Ewo Facebook. Ko YouTube, ne seche mam online. Ube nyaye Facebook, mam online. Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, Skype, and a Snapchat. Nini na eye mam online. Ye partners, eye Salamu Muslimin Foundation. Eye inyanka, ene omosho omosu. Sadaka Wars Project, yitu tuwe bura ewe mkrasye. Ye main sponsors, ah, omos sponsor jume diye yi, eye B. Musa Fons, edun, ene owo. Habitat Air Conditions and Engineering Works, abuabu nima, ene ononso ewo. 
na opesa o sponsor the media ye dia said e be ye be nyebia to credit for your electricity and our bundle for streaming and our studio equipment sir dey also ya ni say o be free 0246 751175 nchi share o ho ye no be discuss e ni bo for pa 50 series a week dodo a bit mi bia no na wa sponsor program a ope e no am bi e be yi bia ma malam cro ana malam cro or any program, no, no, the BIA case, case be ya, every week or be baha. The production team has always been Ishak Abubakar Edu, Musa Al Haj Nyama, Haj Omar Mohammed, Abdul Aziz Ishak, Masood Nashiru, Faisal Mohammed, Yusuf Abdul Mumi, and Amir Mitiye Jom, your friend Yunus Mohammed, and Eko Siada Abonon Kuna Pamusima Edu and Ainsun. Program a ye a ye ideal Muslim show English edition. Yene ye malama ke siye pa malama bruni. Ena e di jume di e live wa ha. Ne ne topic a obi treaty ye obedience to our parents na. Ansa no be pense pense ni omemu ni yencha ya home resima ye ba ye be she jume di nasi. Wallahi, al jenna to fidos is our limit, insha Allah. Amen. Nam, ya mama kwa ba biem, senem di kan kan, topic a ye be he, eye obedience to appearance. Ye ye suti ama ya huvo, ye ne malama mardia mustafa, eni bidi jume di, ye nyan ufi ya ha. Na onono aya oputogum, oputogum, ti eye English edition of ideal muslim issue, ti misremwa, Yen tree dictionary into yen chain or cane and tiasi and ye beam, nay say, ye quay any more no. A ye ma show. O ye bear man now shall con concern and a woody. Name um ubedi con concern ya son fast one. A bini se obe share link no. Said a bear ye ma menum, ye sisters. Ye nu ya ma ne ye wofa see no more ye man um bit ma benefited from this program. You just share. For we need it a one ever. And yam and yam memma program. But all you have to do for us is to share. For your sisters, aunties, moms, and uh, man in your benefit. Malam assalamu alaikum. I believe you are doing well. Mm, um, we are treating obedience to our parents, and I know uh, you do justice to it, inshallah, for our sisters to benefit. Bismillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulina muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa ahmil wa kudatan min lisani yafkahu kawli. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah today I would like to talk about being obedient to our parents or being dutiful to our parents. Both our parents meaning both our mothers and fathers. Inshallah it is a very lengthy talk because it is a... Um, being disobedient to our parents is also part of the major sins in Islam. So it is not a light talk. It is a very heavy thing, a heavy duty to be obedient to your parents. I would like to start by saying um, our parents are chosen to us by Allah. And our parents can either be blessings to us and also they can be a, a test to us. We cannot say our parents are a test to us. They are rather a test to us. Because somebody can be born in a family where both parents are Christian and then Ali, um, going on he will become a Muslim or par the parents are into these bad habits and all these things are test because even in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, he is the one who created life and death so that he would test you and see who among you or who are amongst you is having a uh, this thing Ahsanu Amala is having will be a, a person with good deeds. So we can say even if your parents are also part of this test, because Allah says the main reason why He created life and death is to test us. So we have to be always be prepared for this test, and then we have to always also depend on Allah and see how we will we will move on, and then we will um, we will accept this test with good faith, and then we will pass this test. So that we can gain, um, gain our um, jannah, or we can gain jannah. I would like to start with a verse in Surah Al-Akaf. Surah Al-Akaf, verse 15. In this verse, Allah says, 
عملته أمه كرعا ووضعته كرها وهمله وفتاله ثلاثون شهرا حتى إذا بلغ عشده وبلغ أربعين سنة قال ربي أوزعني أن أشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علي وعلى والدي وأن أعمل صالحا ترضى وأصلح لي في ذريتي إني تبت إليك وإني من المسلمين The English version of this verse is we have enjoined man to, we have enjoined man to be kind to his parents in pain did his mother bear him and in pain did she give birth to him the carrying of the child to his weaning is a period of 30 months and the, like I would like to talk about just this part of the verse it says we have enjoined man to be kind to his parent so it is a command from Allah that we have to be kind we have to be due to, we have to be obedient to our parents it is a command and then here when he talk about the parents he said both mother and father because parents we know when they say parents even in english it is it means both mother and then father but then he move on saying he move on saying the mother or in pain did his mother bear him and in pain did she give birth to him and the carrying of the child and his weaning is a period of 30 months so after after telling us to be dutiful or being kind, to be kind to our parents Allah then picked out of these parents these two parents he picked out the mother and then he start he started telling us like the pain this woman go, went through when she was giving birth to even during when she was pregnant when she was pregnant of us before giving birth to us and even after giving birth to us so like we we all we all have seen pregnant women today and we know they they go through a lot because of i and because of you a woman will go and then be eating this clay soil which will even cause harm to her body but that is that she's eating it because you you are forcing her to eat it and because of you your mother will go and sit b beside a toilet just because she enjoys the smell and although it will harm her but, but because of you because of you she'll be throwing up she'll, she'll be vomiting so some people even vomit throughout their pregnancy before they give birth just because of you one person and then Allah is just is now telling you this is what she went through during the pregnancy and then when it comes to giving birth let's see how our parents um, suffer when they give birth we've gone to the hospitals before so those of us who have given birth I, um, to my listeners those of us who have given birth they know what they've gone through but those even the guys who have not given birth they know those who took their wives to the hospital and those who pass by the labor hall when they go to the hospital they know what they they hear the screams and the tears of these mothers of us who when they are there it is not easy because even when a mother dies during giving birth when she's giving birth it is termed as shahada it is term of death as the death of shahada now let's look at the the death that is considered considered as shahada we see when you die in a battlefield you say you died as a shahada when when a sun um when a fire burns or you are caught in a fire and then it burns you you die like when you look into this thing you see that the reason why it is even shahada is you are seeing the death coming to you but you cannot escape like you see death coming to you you cannot escape and they said giving birth to when you die while giving birth is also a form of dying as a shahada so it means even when a mother is giving birth she is seeing death coming to her but then she's now battling with death it's either she survives or she dies so even if she dies here it's the term as shahada so it is not a a small thing giving birth is not a small thing and then after that the verse continues saying the weaning and the taking care of the child really like the conceiving and then taking and um, breastfeeding the child takes 30 months so we know um, mostly pair our parents give birth after nine months and then it is in the Quran that she ha she's supposed to give birth to a uh, to breastfeed her child for the maximum of two years now let's see our parents okay m maybe because the ladies out there who are listening to me and those who have given birth those who have not even gave, given birth have seen their mothers or they have seen even their sisters and also friends when they are breastfeeding their children it is not easy because even just after giving birth 
when the mother is breastfeeding the child, she feels pain just at the tip of her breast, and then sometimes with tears, they still breastfeed their child. Why? Because they want their child to grow into an adult, and he should be grow. He should grow into a strong human being or into a strong child. They, even though they are in pain, they sacrifice the pain just to make you happy. They sacrifice their pain. Their pain to breastfeed you. They sacrifice their pain to, to. Um, just to make you grow into a human being. And also, in, during this period, she's the one who baths you. If you are crying, she cannot sit. She, because of you, she will, she will stand the whole night just to make sure that you are okay, you don't cry, you are asleep, before she's even able to go and sleep. She, although she's in pain, she will bath you, and then she, would, she will not even think about much about taking care of herself. She will just be thinking about you. How is she going to... Um, Take care of how am I going to take care of my child? How is he? How is he feeling now? Is he okay? Is he all right? Always you are in her mind. She's always thinking about you, how you are faring, and all those things. And then after, even after the two years when you are growing, a mother still does not leave you there, like saying, thinking, "Oh no, you are grown." Even if you become old and your mother is still alive, she's always praying for you, always thinking about you. Whenever you come to her, she's happy. Whenever she sees you, she feels happy, because. You are her child, and she, she even although she went through suffering, you are still her child, and she cannot um, just neglect you like that. Then after that, um, I would like to also read um, a verse in Philip to Lukman. Oh, um, regarding this verse too, there is a hadith in the uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that somebody came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, "Ya Rasulullah, man, how could be?" Be husni, be husni. Like who, who is who is who deserves my duty or my who am I supposed to be dutiful to? Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Umuk, like your mother. And they say, Wa call a man or like suma man. And he said, Wa call a umuk, suma man, call a umuk or suma man. Then he said, Call a abuk. He said, Who who deserves my who do, do I supposed to be dutiful to? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Your mother. Then he asked, then who? He said, your mother. Then who? He said, your mother. Then the third one, he said, then your father. So we can see that that hadith and this verse, they move like they move together. Because in this verse, Allah Christine, pointed out three reasons why you have to be dutiful to, to your mother. She gave birth to you in pain. No, she she was pregnant to you, or she conceived you in pain. And then she gave birth to you in pain. And then she breastfeeded you and she took care of you also in pain. And this had this to the Prophet Wasallam continuous saying your mother, your mother, your mother for three times before saying your father. So like our mother's position in Islam is not a small thing. And also in Surah to Luqman, Surah to Luqman verse 14. We saw to look man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa was saying al insana bi wali day. I'm a lot to umuhu wahnan ala wahni. Wafiswalu who fi amenin anishkuli wali wali day yak. Ilay yal mosir. The prophet eh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in this in this verse that we enjoined upon ma, upon man to be dutiful to his parents. His mother bore him in weakness upon weakness, and his winning lasted for two years. We therefore enjoin upon him, give thanks to me and your parents. To me is your ultimate return. So in this verse, we see that the um, Allah said, "We enjoy. We are also we are this thing. We are commanding you to be dutiful to your parents because your mother gave birth to you. She she gave she gave birth to you and she conceived you. Or she conceived you and gave birth to you in weakness upon weakness. So she was weak." And we can all, oh, ladies can bear with me, even the men know. When a woman is pregnant, every day with his own problem. Mom Today she is sick, tomorrow she's like this, this. Even sometimes the husband gets tired of her because always she's complaining. Today she's eating a lot, today she's not eating. Her head is aching, her stomach, her waist. Every day in its own problem. So all this weakness, Allah is saying it. She gave birth to you in weakness upon weakness. So... You should what? You should be dutiful to her. And then, in, in this verse, Allah said it clearly that your winning, 
like breastfeeding you lasted for two years your mother breastfeeded you always the food the small food she would take inside you will suckle it out she, because she'll breastfeed you and all the food will go out she'll have to take because of you even some of the food she does she doesn't like like i remember when people give birth and they come to us sometimes this bitter bitter leaf even it's not nice but still because of you she will force herself to take it so that she will get um, breast milk to feed you with it but um, after that allah said you should give thanks to me and to your parents to me is your ultimate return meaning you should I'm thank ready. allah after thanking allah you should thank your parents because you by all means return to allah so here I'll, uh, i want to say allah combine um um thanking allah uh, thanking your parents to thanking him so after you finish thanking allah then you have to thank your parents we can see that we also know of a hadith that the, um, the prophet Salaam said after being obliga- uh, your obligations to the prophet um, the allah and the prophet then the next in line is what your parents so after being ob- after paying your obligations and being useful to allah and then the prophet Salaam, the next in line will be your parents and we can see that um if you are not if you are somebody who is not listen who has who does not put allah first or who is not a person or, or who is not a servant of allah then truly you cannot be obedient to your parent because obedience to your parent comes before a hey, comes after obedience to allah and again we can see this in surah al-furqan In Surah Al-Furqan. In Surah Al-Furqan. Oh, Isra, rather. Isra verse 24. In Surah Al-Isra verse 24. There is a very wonderful verse there. And it reads like, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْمِدُ إِلَّا إِيَّا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَكُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ وَلَا تَنْعَرْهُمَا وَكُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا That your Lord has decreed, do not worship any but him. Be good to your parents and should both or any of them attain old age with you. Do not say them even a word of oof. Neither like reprimand them but speak to them with respect. Here yeah, Allah says, Allah has um, decreed upon you, Allah has ordered you to worship him. And then, and then you should be dutiful or you should obey your parents. And then if any of them, or if one of them attains the uh, attains old age, you shouldn't say oof to them. Like oof, I can say oof, um, the, um, the Quran is oof maybe, I don't know if in Arabic, they always say oof. But even here in Ghana or in our culture, what we normally do is we chuckle or oh, ah, something like that. You shouldn't say even that to your mother. We know sometimes our parents may be needing something or maybe we want us to do something which is annoying and that and this thing. But you, you, Allah told you not to say oof to them. Even if you are denying something they are, they are asking you to do, you should you should deny it with Kaul and Kerima. You should always you should talk to them with Hannah. Talk with, to them like gently, mildly. You shouldn't be talking to them on top of your or on top of your voice. And we should always talk talk to them mildly. And then, and if you do that, Allah says, um, Allah said, then you have Mama really uh, you are really dutiful to your parents. Then the verse um, continued saying the next verse says, rahma. <laughs> and be humble and tender to them and say lord show mercy to them as they nurtured me when i was small allah says be humble to them when you are talking to your, your parents humble yourself when you are in front of them humble humble yourself to them and then and then always speak to, to them with tender or mildly and then when and then always have or when they are in the prayers when they reach old age or even if they are not them after their death always put this prayer in your um, 
always remember this prayer and always pray to them. Say say to Allah, Rabbi Raham, whom I came out of Bayan is regular. Oh Allah, have mercy upon them as they had mercy upon me when I was a child. Now, today, how many of us even know that this Surah is in the Quran, or this um, Dua, or even Allah is um, ordering us to uh, to say this Dua to our parents? How many of us always pray to our parents or always say that we are Rabbi Rahmum, I came Rabbi Yanni Sogira? Look, um, Allah have mercy upon them as they had mercy upon me when I was a child. Do you know what you went to, how you kicked your mother when you were in her stomach? Um, w- like the pain you made her, you made her went through when she was pregnant, you you kicking her, doing this to her, making her heart beat, making her throw up and all those things, making her eat something she doesn't even like, and cons- um, giving birth to you, the pain she went through, and many others. Do you know um, the, the mercy she had towards you, that made her, be, um, that made her patient throughout these years? You don't know. And then now that you are grown up, Allah is telling you you should be dutiful to her, and then you should also have mercy upon her, uh, upon her, so that it will, um, and you should also pray to Allah that He should have mercy upon her, as she had mercy upon you when you were young. There is also a hadith of a man from Yemen who carried his his mother from Yemen to Mecca, like he, he he carried her from Yemen to Hajj, and then he came and then he saw Ibn Umar and he said, Yeah, Ibn Umar. I carried my mother from um, Yemen to Hajj. Have I fulfilled my rights or my responsibilities upon her? Ibn Umar told him, "You've not, you've not fulfilled even, a, even a piece or even any, even let even a dot of it." So now, what of me and you today? What do we do to our parents? We even end up, um, we get annoyed when they are talking. But we don't do anything to our parents. Because I will not, um, nobody here, uh, nobody listening to me will say he has ever carried his mother from where he is to to Hajj or from where he is to even a place. Even if you will carry her maybe to the hospital and and to this thing, that is to those who are also even dutiful to their parents. But somebody carrying his mother to Yemen, from Yemen to Hajj, even even Omar told him that he has not even come. Com- completed even half of her responsibilities so me and you what uh, like what amount of her responsibility have we concluded that we are still complaining always complaining always complaining always complaining we can say um if if your mother is sick now and you are taking care of her sometimes we we tend to say oh i'm doing good i'm i'm taking care of my mother i'm trying to pay her back i'm doing i'm doing this i'm doing that i'm helping her i'm I'm carrying her, how she carried me when I was old. I'm doing the same to her, something like that. But we also forget that well, when she was carrying us in her womb and then when she was taking care of us, she was having the perception of praying to Allah. When would this child, um, praying to Allah for this child to grow and become healthy and always praying for the good future of you or your good future or the good future of her child. But then we... When our parents are old or when they are sick and they are they are um, sick and we have to carry them here and there, carry them to the bathroom, carry them to this, our perception is not when will she get better or when will will the, uh, when will she become well and then also be good and then all something like we will, we don't think of when she will also become well and then good and this thing. What will we be thinking of? Oh, when will this? When will she die? So that this, this thing, this suffering and the responsibility I'm doing, all these things will end. Meanwhile, although you are doing the same thing, your, your mindset, the mindset she was having when she was taking care of you was different from the mindset you are having when you are taking care, of, when you are taking care of her. Now let's even look at our mother Hajar, Nana Hajar alayhi salatu wasalam. Let's look at what this woman went through. When Ibrahim, uh, Ismail alayhi salatu was salam was left with her at um, this thing, um, um, at where pres- presently Mecca, where Mecca is now, just because the son or the child was feeling tasty, she ran for 400 meters seven times to suffer, and then Maru was suffer, and then Maru was suffer, without even knowing. She didn't even know she did that because, because of the frustration, because of the motherhood, like. 
what is in her, her the heart of a mother she ran without even knowing and through this running and this thing her motherhood became this thing, an act of worship for us today and even for though the generation that will come after us generations upon generation have been doing this act of motherhood she did as a form of worship because Allah has ordered it and then also there is we can there is also the prophet um, hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that a man by the name Jahima came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and saying, Oh Messenger of Allah, I want to go out to fight and I have come to seek your advice. Like I want to go out for jihad and I have come to seek for your advice. The Prophet said, For her like I um, do you have a mother? And then he said, Yes, like do you have a mother? Meaning is your mother alive? And then he said, Yes. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, For Zamha fa in al Jannata Undarijleha. Go back to your mother because Jannah lies under her feet or beneath her feet so somebody came to the prophet وسلم, wanting to go for a battle or wanting to go out for jihad wanting to fight with the prophet وسلم, in the course of islam but then the prophet وسلم, asked do you have a mother or is your mother alive and then he said yes then he said if your mother is alive then you should go back to her go back to her and then go back to her because your jannah your jannah is under her feet. Maybe he came to perform um, this jihad with um, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that he will attain jannah. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you will not get your jannah here. Go back to your mother because your jannah is under her feet. Go there and then seek for your jannah. So, also to the um, my sisters and brothers out there, like you, you cannot say, even to me myself, who is sitting here saying I'm preaching, I cannot say this preaching is taking me to Jannah. I have to go back to my mother. And you too, you have to go back to your mother and seek her for your Jannah because my Jannah is not on this chair or on this speaker. It is under my mother's feet. And you too, your Jannah is not wherever you are or wherever, um, outside where you are seeking for money or something. Your Jannah is under the feet of your parents. And also, we can see um, there is a story of Abdullah bin Zubair. Abdullah bin Zubair was a companion. When his father died, Abdullah bin Zubair was crying. He was shedding tears and crying and crying. So the companions were worried. They came to Abdullah bin Zubair and said, Abdullah bin Zubair, why are you crying? Your, um, your father is dead. Why are you crying so much like that? He said, I'm not crying because my parents are dead or because my father is dead. I'm crying because my this thing, my closest way or my closest daughter Jana has been taken away from me. He's crying because his parents are dead and then the the easiest way to get Jana is by serving the parents and by being dutiful to the parents. So he is crying because his parents are now dead. Like he is having more like his Jana or attaining his Jana will have to will will have Will ha he will have it as making more much and more things other than just serving the parents and then getting the gender. And also, we can um, there is also a a story about a a companion. I don't know a companion or a man in Sura in uh, even Maja, Sura and even Maja. That a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam complained to the, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that his father. His father is taking his wealth. His father is spending his money. His father is doing this. His father is doing that. And then the Prophet wasalam, asked him to go home and then bring his father. So when the man stood up and then he left, and Jibril wasalam, came to the Prophet wasalam, and told him, Oh Prophet, if, this, if the father of this man comes, ask him what he, he was uttering when he was coming. So when they reached there, the Prophet wasallam asked the man, when you were coming here, and that he asked me, your son came with this complaint and this complaint. Uh, do you approve of that? He said yes. And he said, when you were coming here, you were uttering something. What were you uttering? And then the man was shocked. He said he really uttered something, but he uttered it in his heart, and he knew only Allah had it. But he, when he was coming, he just made a little poem saying, oh, my son, when you were young, I was... And when you are sick, I am also sick. Even though I'm not sick, but when you feel sick, when you are sick, I also feel like I am sick. I don't. I'm not able to sleep for the whole night. I I stay all night looking, taking after you. When you are this, when you are hungry, I'm um. I don't feel like eating because I make sure you are full because I before I 
it and now that you've grown up that um now that you've grown up you are now reporting me to the prophet wasalam, just because of the little money i take from your money even to to still take care of you not to do my own things or not to use it for my own self i'm still using the money to take care of you and your other sibling when the prophet wasalam, when the man was saying all this the prophet wasalam, his head was down when he when he raised his uh, head up he was in tears even he it is said that his beard was all soaked with tears then he held the man he held the dress of the man and he told him you and your you and your wealth and everything that you have belongs to your father so go back and still be dutiful to your father and then still let him take from whatever you have because you all belong to him so we can see how can you like uh, he just came complaining to the Prophet as I'm thinking the Prophet who maybe reprimand the man or why he is doing that or why he would take all the why he would take his son's wealth. But then the Prophet he told him, You and your wealth belongs to your father. So even it is also it is a hadith. So meaning to us even this present day, we have to know that us together with our wealth and everything belongs to our parents you cannot say because you have money and because you are wealthy now you you are leaving your parents to go and stay out somewhere just because you want peace of mind and this thing and even um, um the story of hajar we see the hearts of a woman now let's look at our ladies today what kind of hearts do we have like even um ladies of today they some people even have the heart to even abort their children. Others have the heart to even fight with someone and use knife to stab. All these hearts are not hearts of a, a mother because a mother is even afraid to even hurt an insect. I read something on my phone saying a, a, a pregnant woman was crying and then the husband asked her, what is wrong with you? Why are you crying? She said she killed a mosquito. And then the husband said, ah, you killed a mosquito, so there is nothing wrong with killing a mosquito. And then she said, the mosquito had children. So you see, like, the heart of her mother is moved to the extent that even killing an animal, she still thinks about that. The, the animal is having the children. So um, who, like, how would the children also survive without their mother? But today, our ladies out there, it's not it's, it's a very sad thing what is going on today because you see somebody even the way the person is dressed meanwhile you have to your your child should be imitating you the the person moving on from here today doing all sorts of bad things the heart the person's heart is very even if the person sees it's like um even somebody stabbing someone the person can still look at it look at this thing without even having a, a soft heart to take off her eyes or even cry for such thing but even she even also have the ability to use blade or even knife to stab her sister or to even cut her own thread so we should try and change our thinking and also change our heart we should try and then make our heart soft into the heart of a mother even mm, we can there are many stories of a mother mothers a mother mothers listen we know that the mothers do a or a mother's prayer is not a a small prayer when your mother pray for you when she pray for your goodness inshallah it will it will be answered especially when your mother is angry when you make your mother angry and she prayed for you or your goodness we know that it will it will allah will accept your your her prayers so this is the listen we know that um i and the dua of the Prophet is what is being answered without maybe Allah says if the Prophet made dua makes dua, Allah answers it. And now he says, even if your parents or if your mother makes dua for you, Allah accepts. So to our mothers out there too, I would, like sometimes we should we know sometimes we offend you and then we do a lot of bad things to you. Or maybe sometimes we make you so angry. But when you are so angry, this is the point. She's still your daughter. This is the point you have to make good, good dua to her. You don't curse your child or you don't make bad dua to her, because this time, when anything that you say from anything that you say or anything, any dua that you say, it goes direct to Allah, and then Allah accepts it there and then. So 
if you are angry, she's just your child by all means. Um, just within some two minutes or three minutes, you calm down and then the hunger will go and this thing, and you even start regretting whatever you say. And you so there is nothing at the word you utter, you cannot take it back. So we should be mindful of this. Whenever our parents and our children offend us, you, you can pray, pray for the child's goodness. You can say, oh, whenever your child, okay, I pray that you become half his or I pray that you become this and this and then you also suffer from memorizing the Quran or something like that, even as something like that. But you don't curse the child or insult the child and say a lot of bad things to the child, always saying this and that and then this thing will follow the child to um, till he grows up. There is also a hadith that Prophet Allah said, or oh, every bad deed or every um, sin you commit in this world, you'll be punished on the year after, in the day, um, the day of judgment. But whenever you sin against your parents or you are not, you are disobedient to your parents, you will be punished in this world and even in the year after. And then it is true. When we see, we like, if even those parents who whose children are maltreating them today, if they will recall, they maybe they did the same to their parents too, because like they say, the world is circulating. Whatever you do to your parents, um, stay, your child will also do the same to you. So it is the same punishment you are going to. And even if a child, if you are, um, if you are not, um, obedient to your child, or you you. You are always disobedient. You are disobeying your ch- your parents and then making them angry every time. Then, even you know that even in the near future, you will not. Even some of them, they 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 get into um, this thing, some death or even the the, the way they die you know, is is very this thing sad and it is very. And when you go through to or when you go. Um, you try to investigate what caused that. You see that maybe they were not they were not obeying and they were not respectful to their parents. We know of a Sahabi when he died, they get, they took him to the grave and then the grave was like wasn't taking him when they put him the grave will take him out. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, um, this what this grave is doing meaning this um, person or this companion has something against his mother. So go and call his mother. When the mother came, she said, it's true, this child has done this and that for me, but then I will not forgive him. Then the Prophet said, if you will not forgive him, then already he will be punished on, <laughs> when he will be punished in the grave. So let's start his punishments here before he reached the grave. So they look for sticks to cane him and they started, but then when the woman saw what they were going to him, she said, okay, it's okay, I've forgiven him. So this is the heart of your mother. No matter how angry she is, she will still not like her child to suffer. So if your mother is having this heart towards you, you should also have that heart to her and um, towards her. No matter how angry she will make you, or no matter um, how busy you be, you should have time for your mother. You should, ha- you should not let your mother suffer. You should not, you shouldn't, it shouldn't be in your destiny. You shouldn't like it. To see your, your mother is suffering. When your mother is sick, it should also be your sickness. You have to have that heart or that feelings towards your mother. We can see even in the life of, uh, an example is in the life of Imam Malik. Imam Malik is a scholar, a great scholar of Fiki. Um, for a lot of people know about him. Um, he, he wrote the book of Malik Muatta. When this boy was a young boy, what he was having in mind or what he wanted to be in future was a singer. And then um, his mother, because of her this thing, um, the the vast knowledge of mother mothers, and then how mother understand their children, how they can convince their children. She took it. She took that opportunity to convince him. She told him, "Oh, my son, you know, um, singers are always be, um, handsome, and they always wear nice clothes. So let me go to the market and get you a nice atta." She went to the market and she went and bought this jalabia and the macaria, and then. All these things, um, the shakes were, or shakes were. She went and she came and bathed him. She dressed him and she made him sit on a chair. Then she started asking him questions as a student, asking a teacher a question. She asked him, um, so Malik, what is um the rakah for Zuhur? Then he would say four. What is this and what is that? Then he will be answering her. So he also 
this thing that his mother was doing to him, he started having that feeling of being a sheikh or be, being an um, alim, something like that. So from there, he started also going out to seek for knowledge, and that is how he became this big scholar, even after his this thing, his death for a very long period of time. Up to date, people are still using his book, and people are still calling his name. Now, let's come to Shafi. Imam Shafi, too, is also a Fiki scholar. One of the Fiki scholars, Shafi, and Imamiki and Shafi. Imam Shafi, too, when he was young, it is said that his father died when he was in the... Some people said it when he was in the room. Some others said when he was still young. When his, his father died, his mother... Um, his mother tried hard, just a single mother taking care of her child, because she doesn't want him to, like, to be alone. She um to be around her so that he, will, he he will just be doing whatever he wants to do or something. She took this young boy to Mecca and she left him there. She told him, "I'm leaving here. Learn the Quran. When you are finished with learning the Quran, you can come back." When he came back, she didn't let him stay with her. She took him to a companion called Rabia and she told him, "I'm leaving here. You here with Rabia." Learn the character of Rabia, and when you are done, you should come to me. When he came to her, she didn't again leave him there. She took his hand, and then she took him to Imam Malik, and she said, I'm giving, I'm bringing you here to Imam Malik. Stay with him, and then learn the water. That is who a parent, or that is who a mother is. So a mother always have a child in mind, and she is always thinking about the future, the future, the future of the child. And that's why there is even a saying, a, a popular saying that, Whenever a, ch- a child is drowning, the father stands there worried or calling or calling for rescue to come and rescue the child. But the mother, when she just reaches her, she doesn't think about anything. Even if she can't swim, she can jump. She jumps into the water just to save her child. That is motherhood. And there is also uh, this thing. During the time of Ali, Radi Allah, and her, um, there is a companion called, is it, there, there was a companion when the com- the company they were embarking on an expedition or to out um, a place outside Mecca, so when they maybe uh, like when they normally go there, they stay for a long time. So when he was going, he gave thirty dirhams to his my, his wife, and then he told her this is the thirty dirhams. And that time, to his child was a very young child. He was still be- the child was still breastfeeding. So they went there and they stayed for a long time for many many years. So when he came, he he just practiced the sunnah of the Prophet So when he came back to Mecca, hey, when he came back to Medina, he didn't go straight home. He went into the mocks and then he sat and then he sent someone to tell the wife that he is back. So he's come. And when he sat there, he saw that there was a, a companion in um, sitting in the mocks and then people have surrounded him and then he was giving he was giving them dawah and then reading the reciting the Quran, preaching to them and telling them good things. So he said, Mashallah, what a child. And then he stood up and he went home. When he went home and he saw his wife after um, welcoming him and serving him with water and then talking to him, then he told him, he asked the wife, where is our child? And then what did you do with the 30 dirhams I gave you? Or 30,000 dirhams I gave you? Then the woman said, the 30,000 dirhams I gave you, if you want to know what I did with it, go back to the mocks. You will see a man there or you will see a gentleman there. And that is what I did with the 30,000 dirhams. Meaning, the 30,000 dirhams that the husband gave her when he was going, she used it to take, and she took care of this child. She made him steady. She made him, took knowledge, and then he became an, a, a preacher and an alim, somebody reciting Quran to these people, this and that. So, we can see that it is true this, this motherhood or her motherhood or her sense of motherhood that this thing happened to her. We can see also this thing, the, um, um, uh, uh, there is a companion, a story, also known story about a companion and then his wife. That, the companion went, went out to the mosque and then he, when he was going, his child or he went out when he was going, his child was very sick. He was very, very sick. But then after he went, the child passed away without him knowing in the evening. So the mother bathed the child. She dressed him and she made him lie down on the bed and then she covered him. Then she also bathed. She she also decorated herself. And then when the man came, the man said, um, he greeted and he said, how is our child? And, he, and then she said, he is better than you left him. 
although the child is dead, she didn't just say it to the father so that he would feel heartbroken when he just entered the house. She said he is better than you left him. So the husband also came. They had they slept together in the um and had this thing intercourse and this thing. So after on after the intercourse, he went to check on his child and then he found out that the the child is dead. So he ran to the Prophet wasalam, thinking he has committed a sin or something. Then the Prophet wasalam, told him, you have not committed a sin and this is a righteous woman. And Allah will bless uh, your what the intercourse he had um, on that day. And truly it is said that after many years that the, the woman gave birth and this child grew to become a half is also uh, teaching a lot of People and also his generations, they, he gave birth to half his half his half his to all the people who uh, he gave birth to children who were memorizing the Quran and many of them. So there are many um many um distinct examples and hadiths we can learn about about our parents and and um, this thing um 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 our mother especially our mothers what they went through and so today I would like to ask a question. What is happening today? How do we treat our parents? What, like, what are the treatments we give our parents? Are we obedient to our parents, or are we not? Like we see, the uh, Ismail alayhi salatu was salam being obedient, and when he was obedient to his parents, and then because of the knowledge and how his mother took care of him, because when his father came to visit him and his father told him, my um, Allah has ordered me to sacrifice you or at last ordered me to slaughter. I've seen in my dream that I, I was sacrificing you. Due to, because of the obedience and then because of the knowledge, the lessons he took from his parents, it, it, not his parents, his mother particularly because he was with his mother, the answer he gave um, his father was, it was, very, it was superb that if it is from Allah, then so be it and I'm okay with it. I'll be patient. So this is the type of mothers we want in in um, in, to, in this era or today. Um, our ladies out there, we should try our best, learn from these mothers. Hajara is there, even Maryam alayhi salatu was salam. If we can see that even when Allah was talking about how Isa alayhi salatu was salam, um, he, when he was trying to prove himself that his mother did not commit zina, but he is from Allah. He said he he said it, and then he said, "And my and leave my mother. My mother is a pure person. She's a chaste person. She's not what she is not what you are talking um, about her, or she's not a person who will commit zina." So he also said, um, "My mother." He confirmed, and then he he praised his mother there when he had the time to talk. Uh, a child who was still breastfeeding. So we should try and learn from these mothers. We, we should try and learn from these women in history, how they took care of their um, kids and how they took care of their children and how come their children came to become these alims and these prophets and, and, and many others. And uh, again, I would like to end um, with a hadith by that a man um, I would like to end with uh, this that um the Prophet like the parents are the closest door to Jannah. So if your parents are the closest door to Jannah and your parents are just right there before you what are you waiting for? And the Prophet Sallallahu again said, um, um, he said he was there and then he started saying he is doomed, he is doomed, he is doomed. He said this three times and then he said a person who is, who is he is alive and then who, or who met his parents, both or I, either both or one of them alive but still did not enter Jannah, that, that person is doomed. So meaning if your parents is alive, then it's an easier way or it is the closest way to enter Jannah. So I would like to end by saying we should try our best and be obedient and respectful to our parents, inshallah. Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Ahaya, ma'am, online, <coughs> radio, TV. 
website magazine na mkwe mwa eba insha Allah na biyatia nise program ye live ewo facebook, youtube twitter, instagram, telegram skype and a snapchat enu ye se upe ye videos enu ye publications ubinya oho Dina ye mam online na upe radio neti 24 hours non-stop dawa Dawa all day. Call radio.net search mam online. Mam radio one ubinaye. Google Play Store. Oko now search mam radio one bit me download ye mobile app at all phones so ubinaye. Mua mu yusu iPhones, iPad, and a Mac Pro. Uko tune in radio. Now search mam radio one ubinaye. Modern Ghana. Omu radio session no. Mam radio one yedaho. Online radio box, Mam Radio One. Yeah, the Your website is eh, mamghonline.org. And uh, your partners are ah, Omuni Yedijuma Ufiaha, a eh, Islam Muslim Foundation. The eh, ANSA and Yankai, we see a name penny for a million drum penny fees or Muntimini Yedjuma. You adapt to them, you register them through forms. Now, you yeah, show them through uh, donation. Utewa na eka wakuma se wose uye sadaka ana uye zakat edema inyanka na se wisiya ana old age omu omuntu mini ya juma odi fa salamu muslimi foundation soa yebe presente ediyama omu omu se na omu fata insha Allah sadaka wells project eye ebro tu for muslim communities bibia nsuo ni ye targeting ye bibia nsuo ni bibia omu challenge with nsuo the air and say two bra at the mau mo na many and sue ah a be flu sa dibia. Ye main sponsor say B Musa phones a doom no more kumasi habitat air conditions and engineering works abuabu nima kumasi and almost war. Na program me may kyle say a life ye videos and ye audios ye flu you flow to eto WhatsApp platforms are who do be breeze so now WhatsApp platforms are omaji and she share to more administrators you know ama coin say young fan to two platform so na among so members and I say among audience in any being team a radio member GH by an old FM USA E Alim Counseling Center Salamu Muslimi Foundation Ideal Muslims of Mam, Mam Dawa Kitiki, Muslim Assess Movement, page 1 to 3. Mam Online, page 1 to 10. Mam Online, Egypt, Mam Online, Libya, Mam Online, Germany. Islamic Gallery, Ideal Muslims of Twansi. Sa upe se upe kan sa group chat in hu, ana unye videos, ni audios sa yeye ufia ha. Now on so a share my mom for the also yeah and it's a zero two four six seven five one one seven five and a zero two zero zero seven seven three three six seven and a jumedia ye di so uh yes yen koti drum ra and one ya hain and a quancha di f sika and ye dio ye bit ya electricity bills ye bay top bundle a stream life amwahe Ye bear to studio equipment, I enhance your cameras, any other things are nina you know, a sponsorship. I'm going sponsor various programs. It is a program I wish you say, Oh, fit. Nay, oh, de now per se, oh, sponsor, oh, sponsor, sir, program ya. Your percentage, a debema malama, mardia, mustafa, our debefaka, a few fiaba. And our percentage, a call, a mom online, why a debet to credit. Any studio equipment and other things are you do about you may be in Hobra. They also are an so before studio line zero two four six seven five one one seven five in Shah and last pauses you may be no program no a ideal Muslim show a English edition your name Madame Malama Mardia Mustafa any did you may be now production team near Ishaq Abu Bakar Edu Musa Al Haj Nyama Jr. Haj Omar Muhammad Abdul Aziz Ishaq Masood Nashiru. Faisal Muhammad, Yusuf Abdul Mumin, Miami Tiejo, Mia Fremi Yunus Muhammad, Dasene Ebese Shia, Ewo Program Yasu. Program Saka Tua Tua So, Ye Chua Ye Hwa Ba, Ye Ba, Ye Be Tua So, Insha Allah, Nyan Kupo Insha Ubi, Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi, Sheikha Dena Usri, O Time, Yeah, Ok.